In this video, we'll have a look at the input function and some variable types. Let's create a program window. Uh, the input function is used to print a prompt for which the user can answer. So this is printed on the screen and then the user can enter something after this prompt and the function will return, the input function will return this value to your program, which you can then catch, for instance, in a variable. In this case, we call the variable name. Name is the result of this function. And this function, the input function, prints this prompt, a piece of text. And then when the user has uh, entered something and pressed enter, press the line, then the whole line of text will be returned as output of this function. And because of this assignment statement, this variable will be created, name, in which the text will be stored. We can then use this variable in our program. So we can say print so you are name. And if we now run this, okay, temp.py, yes, enter your name, Jaco, so you are Jaco. Um, this is uh, easy in case we're talking about entering text. When, it, when we enter uh, numbers, it becomes a bit different because input will always return text. And that's the difference from what it used to be in Python 2, where the, the type would be dependent on what was entered, which basically gave the, the user control over what would happen in your program, maybe more than uh, the level of control you would want to give the user. So in Python 3, they have uh, done something about it and say it made sure that input always returns a string. And if you want to convert it into another uh, thing, like a number, then you should use conversion functions. So to use that, we first have to know what are the basic variable types in Python. Well, we have uh, the floating points, as we already saw in the, uh, uh, in the, the previous video of the print. Uh, floating points are indicated by uh, a decimal point in the number or by using the exponential notation. In this, in both these cases, because here this means 1 e3 means 1 times 10 to the power 3, in other words 1000, but because of the use of the e, despite the fact that there are no decimal points in here, this will be a float as well. When you use a decimal point, even if there's nothing after it, this basically has the same meaning as 3.0, but uh, when you use a decimal point, Python knows that you are defining a float. So even though this is called implicit type declaration, it is quite explicit. As a user, you defer, define the variable type, which, uh, which it will be when you do an assignment statement like this. Of course, with expressions, you also always have to think about what will be the result of this expression if it's more than just a number, if it's a calculation or a test or something. So these are floating point variables, the numbers you are most uh, used to, because these are, those are the ones that you also use on your calculator, for instance. But in uh, Python, there is a different class of numbers in any programming language, basically, which is called the integer number, round numbers. And why are they a different type? They are a different type because they are used very differently. They are used to indicate a location in a table or a list, or you can use them as a counter, or uh, you know, those are typically uses where you are not using a floating point. And then and there is also a, a different way in which they are stored inside your computer. Integers are always stored precisely, while uh, floating points are approximated by a binary decimal notation. And we are used to use the decimal floating point notation, which means that sometimes, due to rounding off errors, you expect two floating points to be exactly the same, but they are not. And that's why with floating points, you can not really test whether they're the same. And that's why with integers, it's often easier to use those when you are talking about whole numbers, because you can really compare it with values, whether it has reached some maximum or, like I said, like an index in a table, row number, column number, things like that. So that's, those are the two uh, numeric variable types. And there are more uh, types there, for instance, the, the logical type, which can be true or can be false. And those uh, are, uh, you can also check whether there are uh, check some variables, for instance, whether x is larger than y, well, x is minus 3.7, y is 1000, so this will set 
this logical variable to false. A boolean of, of the logical variable is basically the, this, this uh, type of variable. Um, I like to line up the equal signs in Bitcoin. I have a list of assignment statements. And the uh, final type which we already saw is the text type indicated by quotes. You can use uh, both type of quotes as long as you start and end with the same. And this allows you to use the other inside the, the string. So the double quote, the normal quote, or the apostrophe are both valid ways to start or end a string. You can even use multi-line string if you use three double quotes and you also end with three double quotes. Then you can even use multiple line strings like this. Um, so, but the normally it will look like this. Oh, this would be three quotes at the end. I don't know if I typed two or three when you have a multiple line string. In this case, we have a, a double quote at the start and at the end to indicate a text. These are the basic types and you can also convert one in, into the other. Let's run this program. And I can show you some conversion functions. For instance, if I have uh, x now, x is now minus 3.7. I do this in the shell window. As you can see, I can, after I run the program, I can access all the variables interactively in the shell. Um, but if I say convert x to an integer, then it will cut off the fraction and will make it an integer. This is not the nearest integer. If I want the nearest integer, I can use the round function, and then it will make it into the near to a uh, the nearest integer as you would round it as a human. Of course, you can also round it to a number of uh, decimal points behind. In this case, for instance, if we uh, if we have x three with more decimals, and I can also round it off to two round x comma two like this. Um, the, so if I want to convert it to an integer, I can use the int function as a, as a default to convert a float to an integer. The other way around, I can use the float uh, to convert a integer to a float. So i is, is set to 3 in our program, making it an integer. But if I do float, it becomes a 3.0, a floating point. And even switches can be converted to a float. And in this case, it's false will be 0. If switch was true with a capital T and the false also has to be capital F and if I then uh, convert it into a float it will be 1. Um, the, the nice thing of course is also that you can convert it back and forth to text. If I convert string to a text it will put quotes around it and basically shows it how it would be printed by default by, uh, by Python and integers as you would expect. And the other way around, if I have a text which contains a number, I can also convert those to a float or to an integer. But here you see that it says, oh, the string is not valid for an integer. So this will trigger an error when something is entered or when something is given in the text, that's not an integer. And that's a useful feature for our input function to avoid problems when we expect a float or expect an integer and the user enters something else. So with our input function, we typically want to use that to uh, make sure that the user enters something which is valid. And by using two functions inside each other, so using the input first, but then the result of the input is converted to the type that we want the variable to be. So enter the x coordinate, a little space behind it because that's not something input does, close it with two brackets, and now we will make sure that whatever the user enters will be the it will be a text initially, but then it's converted into a float. And if we then say uh, int input enter the number of times you want to do something, then it's converted to an integer. And if we now run this program and we do three and the first, which would 
if we type it inside the program, would be an integer. And we type 3.4 here. Then it says, oh, that's not valid because that's not the type of error or the type of input you would expect. So if we run it again, and then we give an integer, and then it works. And now we see that if we ask for the value of x and for n, we can see that the type is controlled by us, even though the user has entered the value. And this is a very useful feature to control your, your input and generate basically the error that you want. If you do not know the type and you want, for instance, the user to enter a complete uh, list, because that's we haven't discussed a list or, or tuples yet, there's always the option to still leave it up to Python to uh, control what's being entered by using the evaluate function. But this is a bit dangerous because evaluate means that it will interpret this as an expression as you would use inside the program. You can even control variables or calls to function. And that way you give a lot of control to the user. But in this case, if the user wants to enter a float, then indeed n will be a float, as will be x. Because aval looks at the, the, what was entered and then also will return that value. And you could even say uh, 3.5, you could even say 2 times x, and it will be evaluated then inside n, because this will be evaluated as an expression. So eval is a slightly dangerous, but of course also very flexible way to convert inputs. Uh, float, int uh, are the more tighter ways to control inputs. And if you leave the conversion functions out, of course you get text, so the normal input function is still useful. And you don't have to put string around it because it is already a text, as we saw in the first example. So you, it's, it's not really useful to, to put string around this as a conversion because it is already a text by default. So for text you use input, for floats you use uh, the float function around it, and for integers you use the int.